Hello and welcome to Get Started. I'm Merlin and in this video we'll be looking at adding some colour to the models that we built last time. So in part one we built ourselves a Assault Intercessor, a Necron Warrior and a Canoptic Scarab Swarm. Now I'm going to give you some basic painting techniques to bring those models up to a tabletop standard. First let's cover the tools we'll be needing. First off, brushes. It really doesn't matter what range that you use, but I'll be using the Citadel range for these tutorials. I've got myself a large base brush, perfect for applying colour over a lot of area. I've got myself a medium layer brush, perfect for reaching that smaller detail. And I've got myself a medium shade brush, perfect for adding that shade wash all over our models. I also recommend having an old brush on hand. This one's lost a few of its bristles, but it's still perfect for techniques such as dry brushing. When it comes to adding a textured base to our models, we'll need a texture spreader. This tool has a large scoop end for collecting the paint out of the pot and applying it to the base, and a small spreader end, perfect when we come to the detail on the base. Paints. When it comes to paints, I'll be using two types in this video. The first off are aerosol spray paints. I'll be using Chaos Black on my Space Marines and Lead Belcher on my Necrons. And then we'll be using acrylic paints. These are paints that can be mixed with a little bit of water to make them go a lot further. So first off, we'll be using base paints. These are rich pigmented paints they are often fairly thick and will require watering down. These are perfect though for putting on that basic layer. Wash paints are the opposite. These thin translucent paints are perfect for applying all over the model and giving that extra detail to those recessed areas. Contrast paints are a nice mix of the two. They're heavily pigmented but also act much like a wash. They'll give you a wider range of color and detail. Finally, texture paints. These are gritty paints that will help add some nice detail to our model's bases. So first off then, or should I say second off, some health and safety tips. When using aerosol paints, such as this, Make sure you are spraying outside, wearing a face covering to protect yourself from the harmful fumes and also spraying in warm, dry conditions. If you're a younger viewer, make sure you seek adult help when using paints like this. OK, then let's get on to our model. So you're ready to begin painting. We'll need some final tools before we can start. First, you'll want yourself a pot of water. This is used not only to help thin the paint, but also wash your brushes out between colours. You'll also want a palette. I'm using the lid to the jar I'm using as my water pot. This is where we can apply our paint to and then mix in some water to help it go a lot further. Not essential, but you might want a painting handle. This means you can hold the model and angle it to reach hard to reach areas. And finally, we'll want some tissue. I'm just using some kitchen roll here, but anything to help clean your brushes off will be ideal. Okay, with your model on the paint handle, we're ready to begin applying our first color. If like me, you're painting the crimson fists, the first colour you want to do is their blue armour. And for that, the perfect colour to use is contour blue. So, always give your paints a good shake before using them. This helps mix the pigment in with the medium. 
open your pot and place it down on your paint area. Let's grab ourselves our large base brush. Grab ourselves some of the contour blue from the pot on our brush. And bringing in our palette, we'll make a puddle like so. Grab yourself just a tiny touch of water on the corner of your brush from your paint water pot and mix it in to our paint. And a little bit more. There. This helps our paint go further and dry much smoother. Next, we'll bring the paint to our model. We're looking to get this all over the model, so we don't need to worry about being too neat. So simply start applying our paint all over like so. If you see it clogging too much in your recess details, Clean your brush off and then scoop up the paint and move it around. Don't worry about getting the paint on areas that won't be blue later. We can always cover over when we come to those colours. Finally, as the black is a fairly strong colour underneath, we may need two layers of blue to get a solid coat. Just let your first one dry and come back to it with a second coat of contour blue. There we go. We've got a good layer of blue down on our Crimson Fist. Next, we'll start blocking in the other colors. First off, we'll use Corn Red. This is to pick out any of the red detail. This includes the left gauntlet or fist, the eyes, and any purity seals and sensors. As usual, give your paints a good shake before opening up and putting them down on your flat surface. Next, we'll take our medium layer brush as the detail we'll be doing is quite fine. So we'll get some of the corn red onto our brush and onto our palette. A little bit more, I think. Just a touch of water to help the paint go on a lot smoother. We'll roll our brush back like this so we get a nice point on our brush and onto our model. So as I said, the first bits we want to do are the eyes. These can be quite tricky, but use the tip of your brush just gently apply the red paint to the lenses. Then we're going to pick out the purity seal wax. As you can see, we've got one on the bolt pistol here. So we'll just pick that out. Corn red is a nice bright, uh, nice dark color. So hopefully only one coat will be needed. And then finally, we want to paint the left gauntlet just here, red, which is where the Crimson Fists get the name. Make sure you angle your model to get all the different detail. Including his fingers and thumb. There we go. Once that's done, give your brush a good wash off and we can move on to the next colour. Okay, the next colour we'll want is Mournfang Brown. And this is going to be used on all the leathers. So the belt, the pouches and the gun holster. So we'll shake up our paint. Still using our medium layer brush, as this is quite a fine detail. Cover up some Mournfang Brown onto our palette. Just a touch of water to help smooth it out a bit. Then 
get our brush to a nice point. So the first area we can pick out here is the holster and pouches. No matter if you get it on the metal at the bottom, we can paint that when we come to the lead belcher details. And then we've got the belt, which goes just along our model like so. You may require two coats of Mornfang Brown. Once done, we can move on to the next colour. With our brown dry and any mistakes tidied up with Carntour Blue, we're ready to move on to our next colour. So the next colour we'll use is Abaddon Black. This will be going on all the weapon casings. So, shake your paint using your medium layer brush, gather some Abaddon Black onto your palette. Just a touch of water to help thin it down so it goes further and dry smoother. And then we're ready to apply it. So we'll apply it to our weapon casing like so. The reason we're doing this is Avalon Black and Chaos Black are two slightly different blacks. So when we come to having to touch up the model later on, it's good to have a coat of Avalon Black down so that tidying up will match nicely. If you want to, you can also paint your bolt guns, bolt pistols casing, I normally leave mine all silver though. Just paint it in like so. And when that's dry, we can move on to our last matte colour. With our black drying, we've got one last matte colour. And this is a of Flesh. We'll be putting this over the Purity Seal um, parchment, as well as any other parchment or hair on the model. As you can see, this model has a helmeted head, so there's no hair on it. If it had a bare head, much like our sergeant, we'd first paint the flesh with Bugman's Glow. And then pick out the hair with the Rakar flesh afterwards. So we've just got our purity seal at the front here to do. We might need two layers over the black base coat. And don't forget to get the underside. If you make any mistakes, you can always tidy up with your base layers later on. We just have one colour left to go before our wash, and that is our metallic. So the metallic we'll be using is Lead Belcher. The reason we're leaving this till last is so that we can simply change the water straight after. This is so we don't get any metallic flakes on, into our matte colours. So, just the same as before, give your paint a good shake. Gather some up on your palette, fill it down with a touch of water, and we're ready to apply the paint to our model. So like I said, this is going to go on all the metal areas. So first off, we've got the Aquila here on the chest plate. We've got these cables on the face mask. 
We've got the engine of the chainsaw. The bolt gun. And not forgetting all the joints in the armour, such as this one on the back of the knee. If you make any mistakes, just as before, tidy up with the base layers, but make sure you clean your water first to avoid contaminating your matte paints. Okay, with our base layers tidied up and our water changed, our Crimson Fist is ready for a wash. The colour we'll be using is Known Oil. This is a light black wash and is perfect for all the colours we've painted so far. Luckily with wash paints we won't need to um, worry about thinning down with any water. But we'll use our palette just so we can control how much we're using and applying at a time. You may need to give your pot a shake just to make sure it is mixed correctly, otherwise you could end up with a glossy finish. But we can use this straight from the pot and apply it all over our Crimson Fist like so. Just want to make sure we work it heavily into all the recesses as well as the flat areas so that we get a nice amount of shading. Once you've finished applying your shade, leave the model for around 20 minutes to half an hour to fully dry. But make sure you check for any pooling, such as in the recesses here. If you see that happening, just soak up the brush, the paint on your brush, and move it around to a new area. There we have it, with our wash dry, our Crimson Fist is battle ready. There will be a basing tutorial at the end of this video. So now, let's look at our Necrons. Okay, we're ready to start painting our Necrons. And while we have already sprayed it with Lead Belcher, we are going to add a coat of Lead Belcher all over the model. This acts as two things. The spray lead belcher and the paint lead belcher has a slightly different finish. And also we'll be able to hit areas that we've missed with the spray. So gather some lead belcher from our pot onto our palette. We're using our large base brush here. Touch water just to help Smooth it out. You don't want too much when it comes to metallic paints. And this is just going to go all over our Necron. Just need to apply the one coat. But this just helps, gives us a solid coverage when it comes to adding the other paints later on. Okay, with the silver dry and a fresh pot of water and a clean palette, we're ready to move on to some of the other colours. The first colour we're going to apply is Corvus Black. This is a nice charcoal black and will look good once we put on our grey wash later. We're going to be painting this all over the gun and on any cables that we're going to be painting green later on. If you've assembled your models like I did in my tutorial on video one, it's a good idea to remove the gun for this part as it makes painting it a lot easier. To do that, simply hold the support arm. We've got a gun free and set it down to one side. Now we can paint the gun as a separate piece and also reach all the detail that we'd otherwise not be able to reach. So as this is smaller detail, we'll use our medium layer brush. And we'll get ourselves 
nice puddle of Corvus Black on our palette. And on to our Necron Warrior here. So we're looking to paint all these cables hanging from his chest. Any small cables that are hanging from the armor joints. And then on the gun, we're going to paint this all over except for the power cells just there. So if you want to for this job, you can switch to our larger base brush, but I find the small, la the medium layer gives us just that little bit of extra control, especially around the areas we want to keep silver. You should be okay with getting away with one layer, but if you do see any silver showing through, let the first coat dry and come back with a second coat. With our black dry, the next detail to paint is Caliban green. This will be going on any of the cables that we want to paint green. So, as before, we'll prepare our paint on our palette. Just a little dip of the water. Luckily on this model, there's only one cable we need to paint green. And that's the one on his gun here. So we'll just add a coat of Caliban green to both sides of the cable. Being careful of all those black details I've already painted. If we do make any mistakes, we can of course Go back over with some Corvus Black once the paint has dried. Okay, as you can see, I've reattached my gun. That's because I'm ready for to do an overall wash. Then our first stage will be finished. So I've made up my own wash here. It is a mixture of Basilicon and Grey and Contrast Medium at a ratio of 3 to 1. So for every one brushful of Basilicon and Grey, add in three brushfuls of contrast medium to thin it down. This will give us a nice diluted basilicon and grey, which means it won't be too overpowering to our model. So we'll get some of the mix on my palette, just so I'm not overloading it. And I'm gonna brush a quick wash off. Then I can load up and we're going to apply this all over our model, working it into all those recesses. And nicely shading down our model at the same time. As with the wash on our Crimson Fist, if you see this pooling too much in one area, just clean your brush off, then soak it up and move it around. Once finished, you'll need to give your model about 20 to 30 minutes to dry before we move on to our next stage. When it comes to doing your scarabs, you just need to do this all over so we can shade all those silver areas. Doesn't matter about areas that won't be silver later. Once the wash is dry, we can easily paint over it. 
OK, with our first stage complete, we're ready to begin stage two. This is all the red details on our model. So the red we'll be using is Mephiston red. This is a nice bright red. And so we'll shake our pot as usual. Gather some Mephiston red onto our palette. Touch of water will help thin it down. And onto our model. So the areas we're looking at covering are the whole of the faceplate, the ank backing here on the chest plate, and his shoulder blade armor. Also check around your Necrons as there are a couple of scarabs on some of them. Like this guy, he has one chilling out on his back. You just want to paint the back two pieces of the scarab armor with a fist on red. On our scarab swarm itself, much like with the smaller scarabs, we want to focus on the back armor plates. Being careful around that silver that we've already finished. You may find after your first layer is dried, you can still see some of the silver showing through. Don't worry, just apply a second layer of Mephiston Red once the first has dried. Okay, with our Mephiston Red down and dry, our Novok Necron is looking nearly finished. So the last paint to use for stage two is to dull the red down with a wash of Agrax Earthshade. And as we're using a wash over a small select area, we'll use our medium layer brush to apply it. So we'll just get small puddle of the Agrax Earthshade on our palette. I'll show you on the scarabs here. Just going to apply this over all the red areas, helping to shade it down and make it look a little more gritty. On our Necron Warrior, just want to try and focus it to the recessed areas if we can. So if you see it pooling too much, just clean your brush off, scoop it up and move it around. Okay, for our third and final stage, I suggest you change your water first of all. As the first colour we'll be using is Corax White. And we don't want to contaminate this with any colour that's already been washed off our brushes into our water. So, give your paint a good shake. Create a small puddle on your palette. And thin down with a touch of water. Now, on our models, we've got a few areas we want to cover. Start on the scarabs. For this, we want to try and dot the central eye on their heads and the energy orbs on their backs. On our warrior, we just want to paint his eye sockets with the cor Corax white ready for that glow effect we'll be putting on next. Also, we want to make sure we have not a lot of paint on our brush. And using the side of your brush, gently pick out the ank symbol on the Necron's chest.
like so. But first, we've got to look at our Necron's gun. You might want to thin your paint down a little more than usual for this step, as we need to try and run the paint into the recess around the energy orbs on the Necron's gun. If you make any mistakes like I've just done there and accidentally cover over the orb, you can quickly wipe it away with your finger, or once it's dry, we can come back in with some Corvus Black later. But just work the Corvus White into the recesses. Okay, with our Corax White details done, we're ready to put our last two colours on. The first of which is Contrast Nasdreg Yellow. This is only going to be play applied in one place, which is the symbol on the on the cartouche. So we want a tiny amount on our brush, not too much, and just apply that over the white, so it gives us a nice golden finish. And our final paint to apply is Tesseract Glow. This luminescent green paint will give our energy glows a real nice finish. So give it a good shake and we can use it straight from the pot just using our palette to control how much is on our brush at a time. So on the warrior we just want to pick out his eyes Like so. And our scarabs, we want to pick out the energy orbs on their back. And then on the gun, we want to work it into all the recessed area where we applied white earlier, like so. As we can already see, It gives our energy weapons a really nice glowing effect. With our Tesseract glow applied and dried, and the area touched up with some Corvus Black, our Necron Warrior is now battle ready, as is our Scarab Swarm. All what's left to do is show you a quick basing scheme that I'll be using throughout this series. Okay, I'm ready to show you a basic basing technique. We'll only need a few colours for this, and some of them can be opted out for others. The first thing you want to do is to paint all the rocks on our bases with Mechanicus Standard Grey. As you can see here, I've got the base for the Scarabs, but the Necrons Warriors also have rocks on them, so be sure to get those at the same time. For this base, we can easily use our large base brush, but for the warriors, I suggest using the medium layer, as the rocks are a lot smaller. So hopefully, if you've left your scarabs off, you can easily get to all the rocks without getting any paint on those wonderfully painted scarabs. So we're just going to get a good one to two layers of Mechanica Standard Grey all over those rocks. Now we're ready for our next step. With our rocks dry, we can move on to our second paint. For this, we're using a technical paint, Astro Granite. This is a gritty paint, and it's ideal for adding some texture to our bases. Give the paint a good shake. This not only allows you to mix up the contents, but it also gathers the pot paint neatly in the top of the pot. So we'll use our texture spreader. Using the large scoop side, gather up some on the paint, on the tool and place it onto our base and start moving it around. When we get closer to the rock seat we'll use the small end to gently push the paint up to the model components. 
make sure you go right up to the edge of the base and as you can see I've even put down a layer of Mechanica Standard Grey so that if we miss any of the base that's been sprayed silver it won't show through so much. You could also spray your bases with Mechanica Standard Grey straight from a spray can as this will make the whole process a lot easier. Once you've got all your model's bases done, you want to leave it for around 20 to 30 minutes so it's fully dry and ready for our next stage. It's been about half an hour and our texture is nicely dry. As you can see, it's still a little bit wet in places, but it's dry enough for us to proceed to the next step. And that's to give the base an all over wash with Agrax Earthshade. Just like how we painted the carapace on the Necron Warrior, give your paint a shake and then we can take it straight from the pot and apply it straight to our base. Because we're not needing to control how much is on it, on our brush at a time, we can put the paint straight on the base and work it around. Once the wash is done, leave it for about 20 minutes again to dry and we can move on to our next stage. Okay, it's been 30 minutes and our wash has nicely dried. It may look a little shiny still, but it has dried. I've given it the finger touch and it's all nice and dry. Right, next stage is to add a dry brush. So we're using a special type of paint called a dry paint. This one is called Dawnstone. If you can't get hold of the dry Dawnstone, don't worry, a layer version of Dawnstone will work just as fine. As you can see, I've also got a bit of tissue here. And as I said in the beginning of the video, I've got my old brush. So we just dip this in, gathering up some of the dry paint onto our bristles. I like to wipe away any excess. And then what we want to do is work this paint into the bristles by rubbing it onto the tissue paper like so. Until not a lot is coming off, just like that. And a little bit more. Just try it on a new area to make sure it's coming off okay. That looks fine to me. So onto our base, what we're going to do is just gently flick backwards and forwards and even in some circular motions. And we'll see the raised details pick up the paint out of the bristles. And it will give us a nice subtle highlight. The good thing about the dry paint is, as soon as you're finished, you can move on to the next stage. As, like the name suggests, it is dry straight away. With our dry paint applied, we're ready for the last stage, which is to paint the rim of the base in a colour that will match your collection. If you're starting one, you can choose any colour you want, but I do suggest using the same colour you use throughout your collections. For this example, I'll be using Abaddon Black, as the nice black rim helps the models stand out a little bit more, especially if your battle game surface matches your basing scheme. You could also easily use Mechanica Standard Grey if you do like a little bit more of a blend between your models and your gaming surface. So. Just as always, we'll prepare our paint on our palette, a little bit of water to thin it down, and we want to paint a layer all along the base edge. You will need two layers of Abaddon Black over the silver. Just let the first dry and then come back with a second layer afterwards. Okay. 
And with the rim of our bases painted, our first models are done. There you have it, simple methods to get your first models battle ready and on the tabletop. In future episodes, we'll learn new techniques to add even more details. Before I go, I'll give you some of Merlin's top tips. When painting large units, like the Necron Warriors, set up an assembly line. Simply paint one colour on all the models, then by the time you've done your last model, the first one will be dry and ready for the next colour. Always make sure you give plenty of time for texture paints and washes to dry before moving on to the next colour. The last thing you want to do is ruin your next colour by having the wash blend in to the colour. Finally, if painting 10 models at a time seems too much for you, break the unit down into two squads of five. Just remember, we only need five models for our first mission. Speaking of... With our painting done, it's time to move on to our first mission. With Mission 1, First Contact. I'll see you next time on Get Started. I've been Merlin. Goodbye.